Hello everyone, welcome back to Six Days of Sacrifice. It's a new day. What should we do? Attempt to go back into the hub? I don't know if that's a good idea. Let's try to find Janine, let's see if she's back here. Microwaving a burrito or something. Hmm. I don't suppose I can finally open the fridge? No. Damn it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have I had nothing to eat for like three days? Or drink? Is there a sink in here? There isn't even a sink. Have I had nothing to eat or drink for like three or four days? Maybe that's happening off camera or something. Because if you had no water for like three days, I'm pretty sure if you're not dead, you'd be doing very poorly. Anyway, it's go outside. Uh... Yeah, that's not a good noise. Alright, we're pretty much entirely in the other world. Who the hell was that screaming? I hope that's not Janine. This blood looks... fresher. Where did this come from? Canning? Wait, 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 wait. That's what I saw in my dream. But it wasn't a dream? Shit. Was I possessed? No. Go. Blood? There we go. It's Canning's blood. I know it is. Somehow. It splattered all over the cell. Okay, maybe now I need to get inside. I'm sure the door won't open. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I can actually move. Hi, Janine. I think I'm gonna go in here. Please don't follow me. What the hell is going on in here? Uh... Okay. <laughs> what the hell's happening? Oh god. I think I better save it. Oh god. Yeah, I should probably save it. There's some kind of barrier blocking the way. Like a force field, but also like like something else entirely. Shit. Okay, okay, okay. If I'm fast enough, can I go over here? It hurts. Oh, that's not good. Oh. Oh. Okay, it was a dream. Or was it? Wait. But there's still a crazy light going on. Was it actually a dream? Kind of? She's gonna pop up no matter what, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, can I talk to her? There's no reply. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. Right, so I think I need to take down the force field, I'm assuming? I'm not sure what I would do if I did, but... The thing blocking my progress. Well, I need two people to open this. I suppose I can take the hat now. This will save my life. Janine will be so put off by my horrible fashion sense, she'll run away, screaming. Just looking around, see if I can find anything. I saw one of those other doors look like it went to a different place. Well, 
What about this barrel? No. Actually, I should maybe look at the security cams, huh? Let's do that, just in case. What's the password? 2741? Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, 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 hello, hello, hello. When I touch it, pins and needles run up my arm. When I pick it up, it doesn't seem to have any weight at all. I'm delving into fragments of memories. Gotta go all the way around, gotta bait her out so I can go to the right spot. This will probably open up the pathway back at the house. There we go. The hole seems to recognize the pickaxe. Excellent. So, can I go... Whoa. Did she just disappear? Wait, so it works for a second and then it doesn't do anything? Okay. What was the point of doing that? Like, I would think that would open it up permanently. It opens up for a second and then it just... Disappears? Can, can I go in here? I should probably save it. <laughs> just in case Janine shows up again. Oh, it's full. Well, crap. I guess I'll start back. How do I go down? Oh, forget that. I'm just gonna replace the last couple. Uh. That's fine. Can I go in here now? I mean, she seems to have stopped coming. Maybe not. Seems to recognize the pickaxe. Oh, wait. Alright, so anything that is, like, phantomy and bluish can pass through. So I would need to be like that if I, if I wanted to go through. That's what I'm getting from this. Because it's not actually opening it up. Except for a brief moment. Which is why I don't understand why it doesn't just go inside during that brief moment, but... Anyway. Weird. What the hell's a pickaxe for if it's not to do something with that? Let's see if I can make it to this door in time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, uh, faster! Okay. God, there's no way I can make it to this one. There's no way I can make it to that one. Or, uh, okay, never mind, I can. There's no point in coming in here, though. There's nothing in here I need. Can I use it on her? I may need it. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's like I'm holding the idea of a pickaxe. All right, the idea of a pickaxe. That doesn't help. Why does it only open temporarily? I guess I can try going back to the other place. Nothing in here. Okay, I could try going into the medical bay if I can make it. Mm, 
medical supplies. That will help me not one iota. It won't open. Great. Okay, does that mean I pretty much have to use the pickaxe on the thingy? The thingy that I've already used it on? The thingy that it did nothing but temporarily disappear? I'm confuzzled. It really seemed like it was the end of the puzzle. It doesn't seem to be. And I don't see what I could possibly be missing. This chase music has lost its scariness. It's like dun 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 dun. And I'm like, where do I use this pickaxe for five minutes? So she disappears when I use that, right? <laughs> she just turns back and goes the other way. Bye! What if I just keep trying to use this door? That's not gonna work. Call a friend. Help me, someone. Samantha. Damn it. Janine. Damn it. She's too busy being possessed. What in the bloody hell am I supposed to do with this hole? Pickaxe that goes away, and then it's all like, hey, I'm back again to ruin your life. Right. It recognizes the pickaxe. Wonderful. That's wonderful. What in the hell? What am I missing? There's not much you can do here. I'm very tempted just to look at a walkthrough. Because this has gotten a bit silly. I've got a spirit pickaxe, and I've got a spirit hole. I used the spirit pickaxe on the spirit hole, and it disappeared, and then it came back, and then nothing happened, other than she went away. Which didn't solve anything, because I still can't go through the door from whence she came. Why does she turn around when I use it? Uh, wait, what? Ew. No. Day 5. February 3rd, AD 2386. Yeah, what the hell? Okay. That solution... That's another one of those dumb damn puzzles. Ugh. Whoa. This, of course, is our resident celebrity. The Mephistopheles killer? Yes, you'll remember it was all over the news. Oh, it's him! Last year, the EFS Mephistopheles was relaunched with a skeleton crew of six. The appointed ship's counselor was one Dr. Jonathan Somerset. And he reported for duty punctually and on schedule. Unfortunately, shortly after the launch, it was discovered that the real Dr. Jonathan Somerset was dead pushed down a flight of stairs, presumably by the imposter who, uh, who had taken his place. Offworld security was dispatched to intercept the Mephistopheles. His last recorded communication was a 505 distress call to the EFS Charisma. By the time Offworld security arrived, this man had slaughtered the entire crew. So who is he? His name is Malcolm Somerset, the only son of Dr. Jonathan Somerset. He was a student of psychology at Ganymede University, wanting to follow in his father's footsteps. But he failed the final examination and dropped out. It seems becoming a shipboard counselor was his dream, and when his father was called up, he couldn't hold in his jealousy. So why did he kill the Mephistopheles crew? That's partly why he remains under psychiatric study. It's a complete mystery. His profile is completely inconsistent with a spree killer. The best theory we have is that he was found out and killed out of desperation. But that doesn't explain the demented creativity 
the sheer bloodthirsty relish with which his crewmates were slaughtered. One man was impaled, another blinded. The first officer had her head twisted right around. Many of the corpses were dismembered and stitched randomly together into Frankenstein-like monstrosities. Certainly not the actions of a man simply trying to cover up a far less serious crime. But let's leave him for the moment and move on. We can end. Okay, how does he play into this? This is far in the future now. Isn't it? I'm pretty... Yeah, this... Yeah. Yeah, this is in the future. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, so that, that previous puzzle seemed like a repeat of the one from the second game, where you need to stand in the shadow and get the guy at just the right point. You know, you gotta stand in the invisible script trigger, and then hit him over the head. That thing. It's pretty much the same thing. I hate those kind of puzzles. They're dumb. They're dumb. They're so dumb. Anyway. Yeah, what? How's this guy relevant? Oh, hi. You. I was beginning to think you'd gone forever. This shall be our last meeting. You'll get me out of here, right? You owe me at least that. What makes you think I owe you anything? You're the one who made me kill my father. I only encourage you to do what you already intended. You promised me I wouldn't get caught. You wouldn't have been caught had the Mephistopheles left that locker alone. You knew about that? Did you know about John Defoe? Was it all part of some plan? I did not scheme it. But I did know it would come to pass. All I did was encourage events to take place as I had seen. You know they think I did it. All that senseless murder. I've been locked up in here for six months. I don't care about you or any of your bullshit. Just get me out of here and you'll never hear from me again, I swear. I very much doubt that. But rest assured, I'm here to release you. Thank you. What do I have to do? Just use the key and leave by the door. What? Maybe you haven't noticed, but the lock is on the outside. Besides, the guards outside will... I'm not talking about that door. What are you talking about? What door? What key? Who are you? Uh, someone giving me something? Yeah, how does this guy play into the rest of the story? This guy from the future? And the caretaker. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be a good person. He's just... he's He has his own agenda, obviously. Whatever it takes to get to that, it seems he'll do. Someone sent me a parcel with no return address. It contains some kind of oddly shaped knife. By the feel of it, it's old enough to be an antique. It's like some kind of ancient knife, but with teeth on the end. Like a key. Hmm? Can I use it on the door? I don't think so. I didn't think so. Um. Am I supposed to just, like, kill myself? I got tired of yelling at the guards pretty fast. Okay, well, there's a wall here. Let's find the other door. Uh... Okay. Is that door real? I don't see why that'd be in the cell. Um, it's locked. There's some kind of pulsating slit around where a keyhole would be. What? 
the fuck? Further I go down, the bloodier it gets. The bloodier I get. Is that me killing all of the crew? Whoa, what the hell? I just teleported. I think that was me killing all the crew of the Mephistopheles. Yep. Uh-huh. And every single one of them looks like John Defoe. And now I'm even more covered in blood. It's me killing the crew of the Mephistopheles. Why do I look like the caretaker now? Um. Right, I guess I'll continue on down. Why do I look like the caretaker? He even looks bald. I look, I look like the caretaker now. Did I switch to the caretaker or have I been the caretaker all along? But if I've been the caretaker all along, I was talking to myself? Or... What? Hmm. It's like I'm inside some huge creature. That's muscle. There are veins and flesh. Looks like the corpse of an old man in the remnants of a suit, tied up with strands of muscle and skin. The stench is terrible. I don't want to go near him. What about this pit? It's an extremely deep pit opening out into an abyss of total blackness. That sounds wonderful, let's go. where I come from. Blanking people is considered rude. Wait, is that Trilby? You're alive? Of course. Chozo will not let me die. I think that's Trilby. Who are you? You ask a complex question. The name by which I know myself is Trilby. But I strongly suspect that I am not the original. I'm probably a clone, given over to Chozo as a plaything. Or perhaps this is my arrogance talking. Perhaps I simply cannot bear the thought that the real me would ever be imprisoned like this. What is this place? I knew you'd ask that. No one who knew what this place was would ever come here voluntarily. You're inside the body of Chozo. H how did I get here? The last I knew, I, I was in an asylum. On Earth? 
in the universe of technology, then I can't explain it. There's no possible way to get from there to here. Not corporeally, anyway. Who's Chozo? A more appropriate question might be, what is Chozo? Or even, where is Chozo, since it seems he is a place as well as a fiend? But to answer you, Chozo is a pain elemental. There were once many of his kind in the universe of magic, small and largely harmless creatures that fed on the petty anguishes of others. But over time, they became more and more reliant on magic, until their actual physical bodies were all but completely vestigial. They fought for more power by killing and absorbing each other. Chozo is the very last of his kind. A bloated mountain of gristle whose very essence crackles with residual magic. And now nothing but the most hellish torments will sate his hunger. He's the closest thing to a god of pain. You're the one who sent the idol into space. Possibly. Certainly I have memories of doing so. And you must be the man who found him. How could you know that? After the hotel, Trilby spent many years researching Chozo. He requested a, v a vision of the idol's future from the Ministry of Occultism. He was well respected by them, and his request was granted. Whether I am the original or not, I do possess the memories of that vision. I saw you. I saw what Defoe did to you. I saw what you became. And I realized that I'd seen you before somewhere. But never mind. You want to res redeem yourself, don't you? More than anything. Then all you have to do is follow my instructions. What do you want me to do? I want you to kill me. And don't pretend you're a stranger to killing. You have Freyhorn's blade. It's infused with Chozo's magic. It's the only thing that can release his hold on me. I want you to drive it into my heart. The nature of the blade will infuse you with energy. Call it my soul, my life force. We don't have a proper name for it. I want you to give it to the one who needs it. Who? You'll find him nearby. He isn't physically here, but Chozo is observing him, and so he manifests. My life force will still save him, wherever his actual body is. I won't kill you, I'm gonna bust you out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna bust you out of here. We're gonna dig our way out of jail. Uh, yeah, that, I don't think that's gonna happen. I guess I'll try it anyway. <laughs> We're gonna bust out of Chozo's body, the god of pain. Yeah, good luck with that. I won't kill you, I'm gonna bust you out of here. No. Even if you could, I have no place to go. To the pain elemental, time is non-linear. It sees the past, present, and future all at once. Were I to leave this place, I could end up at any moment in time. Or every moment. Or no moment at all. Is the reason why you and I are able to interact like this. Despite, from my perspective, being in the 21st century, and you in the 24th. Now, kill me. Both our destinies demand it. Alright, wait here. Don't leave me. I don't think there's anything else I can do except kill him. I mean, what is there? There's a pit, and there's him. Yeah, Trilby said he's seen me before. Yeah, that's because I look exactly like the caretaker. Hmm. 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 I'm trying to think of that information. Okay, I'm the caretaker. What does that mean? How? How? <laughs> Better question, how am I the caretaker? How have I been traveling through time? Or... I don't know. Okay, Trilby. Wait, there's nothing I can do with this pit, right? It's 
a long way down, all right. All right. Here we go, Trilby. Wait, he won't do it? You son of a bitch, kill him. Never thought I'd say that about Trilby, but yeah, fucking kill Trilby. There we go. I'm sorry. None of it was your fault. Remember that. It's another Trilby. But he looks so much younger and healthier. If it weren't for that stab wound. That's him when he was lying on the wood. The tree stump. Is this what brought him back? Wait. This is going to be the conversation, isn't it? The conversation that he had with the caretaker. At the end of the last game. That's what it's going to be, isn't it? So, you felt that, did you? I think I should get out of here. That might be wise. Uh-oh. Yep. I'd say he's dead. Damn it. We're gonna catch hell for this, aren't we? Why do you have to cut his own throat out? Couldn't he have just hung himself with his pajamas like most of them do? It's like he knew we'd have to clean up the mess. Personally, I'm more worried about how he got hold of a knife. You and I both know, if a freak really wants to kill himself, there's very little we can do to stop them. Can you honestly say he doesn't deserve it? I've got a little brother just joined the Navy Medical Corps. Same age as that poor doctor in the Mephistopheles was. I can assure you right now that there's not... Uh, that's not how Dr. Laszlo will see it. Come on, then. Let's fetch a body bag. Blackness swallows me. The furious roar of Chozo fades from hearing. I am free. Free of that place. Free of physical form. The ebb and flow of time flutters against what passes for my body, caressing me like a lover. When I was a man, I was Destiny's prisoner. Now, I will be her servant. There are men and women who must be guided. I will be the caretaker. Day 6 July 28th, AD 2189. You could not have saved her, Decabe. But there is still enough time to save yourself. What happened to her? Her weakened defenses allowed John Defoe to crush her personality. In loving her, you tainted her. Tainted? What's that supposed to mean? Just as the past affects the future, so too does the future affect the past. And your future, Decabe, is a dark one indeed. So dark that its influence travels backwards through your lifetime. Leaving an eternal blemish on your soul that worsens as your fate draws near. Shut up! Why can't you ever give me a simple, straight answer? Why won't you help me get out of here? You will find the way out in the basement of Defoe Manor. What? If you wish to escape, go there. You expect me to go down into that madhouse? What about John Defoe? Enough clones of Trilby remain to provide an escort. They will buy you the time you need to break through Defoe's defenses. You must combat the corrosive influence of his mind on equal footing. Know him. Become him. Defeat him. We shall not meet again. I wish you luck. Wait. 
Will you at least tell me who you are? Once I was a man. John Defoe destroyed all I had. But a gift gave me the power to see the destiny of all mankind, while simultaneously enslaving me to it. You and I, DeCabe, are pawns in a game too vast and complex to understand, but a pawn that crosses the board becomes a king, or at the very least, a prince. A prince. <laughs> the prince, there's the prince, the tall man. Hmm. Freyhorn's blade is one of the Order's most sacred relics. It is said to have been used by the 18th century prophet Jack Freyhorn himself to deliver the Twelve Sacrifices that enabled him to write the Books of Chozo. When a person dies, their body, mind, and soul separate and drift apart. An individual killed by Freyhorn's blade, however, separates differently. They leave their body behind, while the mind and soul remain together. This results in a non-corporeal spirit of unusual ability, capable of strong manifestations, but they remain forever under the command of the one who wielded the blade. Wait a minute. This results in a non-corporeal spirit of unusual ability, but they remain forever under the command of the one who wielded the blade. I killed Trilby with the blade. That means he's under the caretaker's command. An individual can exploit a loophole in these rules by killing themselves with Freyhorn's blade, which would theoretically transform them into an immensely powerful spirit, a magic-infused force of pure will. A <laughs> loophole. A <laughs> loophole in the magics. That's, for some reason, that's really funny. Like, who wrote these rules? Idiot. Should have should have fixed that in a patch. None, however, have yet chanced this. Hmm. Well, a lot's happening, is it not? Holy crap. Let's see if I can pray to the order yet. Nope. Actually, I want to look at that blood stain. I don't think it'll do anything, but... Oops. That's weird. For some reason, my eye... My eyes in my inventory are now at the bottom right instead of the very first option. It moved. My eyes have moved. <sighs> Goodbye, Janine. Now it's completely switched over. Not entirely sure why I'm going in here. I said there's enough Trilby clones to uh, to protect me. But I need to get into the, into the hub, do I not? Oh, it's already open. Okay, here we go. Hi, Trilbies. Will you three come with me into the hub? If that is what you order. We do only as we are told. How many of you are there? We don't know. When any of us fall, another comes here to take our place. So, if you die, I can come back here and there'll be more of you? Or, sorry, if you die, yeah. Until there are no more. Personally, I'm in no hurry to die. Come on. I've got three trilbies. I've got an entourage of trilbies. Oh my god, I hope I don't get them all killed like 20 times over. 
How many trilbies is it going to take? Alright. Um, Lich, also Lich and Lich, I, I don't know. <laughs> a kind of undead. Yeah, I think it's Lich, yeah, like Lich King. Uh, a kind of undead sorcerer granted immortality by removing their soul from their body and placing it in an external object. The Lich's body is indestructible. It can still be stretched, twisted, and made to feel pain, but only damage to their soul artifact will cause permanent damage. Wraith. A servant of a Lich. A dead life form whose soul is placed post-mortem in a small part of a Lich's soul artifact. Making them subservient. Alright, so the Wraith is John Defoe. The Lich would be the tall man, a.k.a. the prince, right? Wraiths are non-corporeal and, like all ghosts, can exert influence over the environments and objects to which they are tied. It should be noted that the Wraith's influence and manifestations become increasingly wild and uncontrolled if its soul is separated from its mind. Oh god. There goes one trilby, I'm sorry. Can I go upstairs? Yep, oh! Shit. There goes another one. Uh... You know, I should... Probably go back for more. And why does the prince keep killing them? Should I go back right now? I guess I should go back. God, I feel really bad about all these trilbies. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go through so many trilbies. So many trilbies. Ah. Just to get all of these things. I don't even know what I'm doing with them yet. I'm just collecting them. I'll figure it out later. Oh, shit. Please, Prince. Mercy. Got a machete, a welding mask, and the apron. Okay, I've only got one left. Uh, what if I use... Oh, if, I guess I've got the whole outfit. Alright, what if I use it on the whole? Oh, now I can go through... Oh, God. Whoa. Father, it hurts. Should have... Father, killed you. Demon. Demon. Demon child, it hurts.
Defoe. Defoe Manor. You are the last one? I think so. The others all went into the house. They never came out. Does that mean anything to you? Does that spark any memories? I think the others were killed. When I think that, images start to flash before my eyes. Defoe Manor being here feels wrong. I think it's supposed to have been destroyed. In what way, destroyed? Fire. It's supposed to have been burned down. Perhaps you should address this inconsistency. Yes. How? I can show you where to get some petrol. Whoa. Whoa. I feel disconnected, like I'm looking down on myself from outside. I'm not far gone enough to be talking to myself. Okay. I can hardly move. Where the hell am I? Whoa. Sound just completely stopped and everything stopped shaking. It's moving. Oh, oh, what the hell? Focus, Decabe, it's not really happening. What were you doing, tall man? There's some kind of document lying on it. Children of the King, rejoice! For the time is finally at hand. Our patience these last few centuries will finally be rewarded. Two hundred years ago, the body of the Bridgekeeper was destroyed. Two hundred years from now, the soul of the Bridgekeeper will meet the same fate. Alright, let me just get this straight before I lose it. Maybe I've already lost it. The body of the Bridgekeeper was destroyed, right? The Bridgekeeper is John Defoe. 200 years from now, the soul of the Bridgekeeper will meet the same fate. Oh, right, it'll be burned up, right? Because the soul is in the totem, and the totem gets burned up in space. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although, technically, I don't think it's 200 years. Isn't it, a, isn't it 196? That's what it said at the beginning of the game. When he was showing the, uh, the idol being destroyed, it said 196 years. Anyway, minor details. These are known as bridge events. And their significance was so great that they sent ripples of weakness through the timeline itself, echoing off into both the past and future. On the 28th of July, 2189, the ripples from the past will collide with the ripples from the future creating an area of extreme weakness between the two realms. If the third bridge event, the destruction of the mind, occurs at this point, the force of the explosion will penetrate that area of weakness and form the bridge between the realms. The destruction of the mind. How do you destroy the mind again? Has it happened? Will it happen? Is the... Is the caretaker trying to make that happen? Why would he want to make that happen? I mean, he is making an explosion. Showing him where to get some pet- Showing Trilby where to get some petrol. Uh, I don't know. Over the bridge, the King Chozo will come. He will come to save us, and all the men of technology, from sin. We must, however, be alive to enjoy this new age of perfect purity. And so it is important that the complex and ophthalmology building be evacuated at least one week prior to the bridge event. <laughs> so, yeah, they did send that guy to die. Uh, oh no. It's a bomb. There's enough nano-explosive here to atomize the county. Well, shit. Um... Nothing for it. I've got to try and disarm. Wait a second. What? The bomb- this bomb's already been defused. 
Oh. Okay. Great. Everything's fine. The wiring under the control panel has been ruined. As long as it's not damaged, this thing isn't going to explode. Oh, as long as it's not damaged, it won't explode. No. No! Six days later. You're watching U UCBC News. An investigation continues into the circumstances that resulted in a nano-explosion detonation in the county of Buckinghamshire six days ago. The blast completely demolished the ophthalmology building, which had been purposely evacuated beforehand, and several lead ophthalmologists are being held for questioning. Although the detonation has not yet been found to have caused any loss of life, two individuals last seen in the area have been reported missing. And environmentalists are already calling this the biggest ecological disaster in the entire history of the country. The investigation continues. As an avatar of destiny, I cannot judge. I cannot afford to question events, only encourage them to take place as history demands. And yet I wonder. I wonder why the Order of Blessed Agnes expected Chozo to enter this universe. After all, a creature so dependent on magic could not possibly survive in a world where there is none. The prophecies were wrong. Freyhorn, the Order, the Tall Man himself, all deliberately misled by the pain elemental. But why? For what purpose was the bridge really constructed? It was open for mere seconds. Nothing came through from the ethereal realm. So did Chozo's plan simply fail? Or was his intention not to send, but to receive? None of this matters. I led DeCabe to the destiny demanded of him by the timeline. Now, I must wait. Two centuries from now, my younger self will require my guidance. The eternal cycle must be set in motion again. And while I do not judge and feel no regret, I find that I do not relish this task. In the 18th century, the prophet Jack Freyhorn put to paper the three books of Chozo, the blood of the twelve sacrifices still fresh on his hands. The Book of the Prince, the Book of Victims, and the Book of the Bridge. This is a central tenet in the faith of the Order of Blessed Agonies. What is not known, not even by the highest acolytes, and likely not even by the prince himself, is that there was a fourth book. It seemed to contradict the other prophecies, and Freyhorn discarded the draft, thinking it a garbled message. This was the Book of the New Prince. Here is what it said. On the day of the bridge, the prince returned to the court of the king, and bowed low before the presence. And the king was greatly wrathful, and he said to the prince, Why have you returned, O prince, you who would betray his king, who would defy his own flesh? And with those words, the king threw down the prince, and stripped away his vestments, and the prince once again became the arrogant man. 
and the arrogant man said, I wanted only to please you, my king. I know you schemed to replace me. If I betrayed you, it was only to remain your prince. And the king replied, I have not forgotten that you are the arrogant man, and still your arrogance blinds you. Who are you to question my plans, you little man of linear time? Who are you to believe he knows what is best for I? I, who has drunk down the agonies of a million men. I, who has seen to the edge of forever. You are not my prince, O oh arrogant man. You were never truly of my flesh. And the king took the vestments of the prince and gave them to the man of purity. And the man of purity became the new prince. And the arrogant man wept aloud. Why have you betrayed me, my king? What have I done that I should earn this wrath? Came the reply. Long ago, you were offered the chance to fulfill the role of the bridge as a being of both magic and technology. You could have proven your commitment to your king. You could have chosen your successor. But in your arrogance, you resisted and created the child to become the bridge in your stead. And after you learned the true purpose of the bridge, you had the audacity to subvert my will. Weakly, you sought to avert your destiny and the destiny of others. But rejoice, arrogant man, for I have provided another opportunity to fight your fate. Simply defeat your successor and return to my side. The new prince faced the arrogant man. And the new prince threw down the arrogant man. Oh, I'm actually playing now. Perhaps I should save. Welp, I'm the pure one, or whatever. Used to be Trilby, I think. There's another Trilby. The guide. I guess I should push him down the deep, deep, dark hole. And the arrogant man knew the name of the king, the book of the new prince. Wow, that was one hell of a game, holy crap. Amazingly, I think I actually understand most of the story, but definitely not all of it. There's a hell of a lot to take in have to read some, I don't know, summaries, interpretations, or things like that to piece it all together. That was definitely the most experimental one. And one hell of an end to the series. Holy crap. Wow. Okay, well, I think I'm going to split my thoughts on, not this game specifically, but rather, probably the entire series as a whole. Yeah, I think I'll do a video on the whole Chozo Mythos. So, I'm going to split my extended thoughts off into that. So, in the meantime, I just want to say, thank you for joining me. I've had a fun time, full of a lot of frustrations, but <laughs> nonetheless, overall, a very fun time playing the Chozo Mythos. Yeah, I've had a good time. It's a really good series. I'm glad I played it. It's damn good. So, thank you for joining me. 
Hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.